Welcome to the first episode of The Bird Herd by Redbird Esports. Uh, today, it's joined by Gigatron, and who is Terry Coughlin, as well as uh, Max. I don't know your in-game name, so you can tell me. Saxy Maxi. All righty. So today, we have David Kirk. Uh, David Kirk is also known as Captain Kirk. He's our president of the Redbird Esports. Do you have anything you want to introduce yourself with besides that? Uh, yeah, so I am actually the director of the esports program. Your president is uh, Skyler, actually. There we have it, director of the ISU esports program. Obviously, um, I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, director, president, yeah, yeah. It's Close the same hand. thing. It goes right. hand in hand. You run it. He's got the leadership <laughs> position overall. That's all that matters. Exactly. Right. So, um, Kirk, you know, we were told before that before coming to ISU that you had a gig over at Akron. And I guess our first question, we just wanted to see how much different, you know, coming over to ISU and starting to set up uh, our esports program was from Akron. Just, you know, obviously not every school is going to run the same way. Just kind of tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, Akron, <laughs> Akron was fun uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, we were starting something with the esports program that really didn't have a model anywhere else in the country at that time. Uh, also, we were kind of our own entity in a sense where we didn't report to athletics. We didn't report to uh, student affairs or campus recreation. Uh, we really just reported to the Honors College because that's where the initiative came from. Uh, but we were kind of self-sufficient and self-sustaining. So that allowed us and afforded us a lot of opportunities to be able to really craft the program the way that we wanted to without having to worry about a lot of red tape. But it also hindered our ability to kind of get the word out uh, quicker rather than you know doing some of the stuff that we did on our own and not necessarily having all that university support. So um, the best part about being here at ISU is uh, I've got some experience on things that went really, really well at Akron and things that didn't go very well at Akron. Uh, but essentially, the, the process and the structure that we're setting up here is almost identical to what we did there. I, I had actually come from Illinois State where I had worked in campus recreation uh, and in the student affairs area. And student affairs for me is kind of the, the space I've always found myself in because it, it is a supporter of students, right? So I came in into esports with the mindset that I want to provide as many opportunities for as many students as possible, whereas my two counterparts over at Akron had different views. You know, one came in with a wealth of knowledge in traditional varsity esports, the competitive realm, and then another our other colleague came in with a lot of the overseas experience where esports is a bit more professionalized. So the three of us together kind of crafted this model where, yes, we do have uber competitive varsity teams, you know, the best of the best. They're representing us in intercollegiate competition against the other best varsity teams in the country. But the reality is, and something that I saw right away, was that population of students is very, very small in comparison to the overall student population and the overall interest that I had assumed uh, students had in gaming and participating, competing, or just socializing in esports. So that's where I kind of took my, my previous history, albeit very small, with uh, club sports and the club sport models that many universities utilize. And I was able to adapt that using resources from here at ISU that my colleagues provided, as well as other club sport programs and intramural programs around the country to develop a, a club esport uh, model where, you know, our clubs offered students the opportunity to continue to compete even if they didn't have that high skill rating, you know, that would allow them to be on a varsity team. Uh, after a semester and a half, uh, we grew our ecosystem, our community from roughly a couple hundred students all the way up to about 2000 students. Wow. Um, and, and when we look at the, the distribution of those students, uh, 55 of them were varsity players, so on varsity teams. We did have a bit more varsity uh, teams there at Akron. Not only did we have 
five game titles under the varsity moniker, but we also had two teams per title. So uh, those 55 students, when you when you take them out of the 2,000 students that we had participating in our program, really accounted for about 2% of the overall gaming population on campus, whereas our clubs and our recreational casual activities provided opportunities for the rest of the students to engage. So uh, when this position came available, again, I was an ISU alum. I saw ISU was ready to jump into esports, and I wanted to make sure that they were going to do it right. Because in at least my view, and I think we'll start to see it more and more as we start to build our program out and other universities are able to, to see what we're doing, that that's going to be the direction that collegiate esports goes in is one of including as many students as possible. I, I think it's, and we might talk about this later, but we have very competitive varsity teams that are going to really compete at a high level Absolutely. this coming year in Rocket right. League, Overwatch, and League of Legends. Uh, but we also have really competitive clubs as well who are who are really setting the foundations so that we can onboard them on as varsity teams like our Rainbow Six Siege teams, right. like our Counter-Strike teams, potentially Valorant as well. So uh, big, big roundabout because I just kept talking <laughs> over and over. <laughs> um, I'm super excited to be here at ISU. It is different. We do have a bit more red tape because we are a public state institution and we're the first in Illinois to offer... Uh, scholarships to students to be able to participate in esports. So working through those hurdles and ensuring that we're setting ourselves up and the students up for success um, has slowed down some of the things we wanted to accomplish. But at this point, we're at about 560 students in our Discord, uh, as well as having three full varsity teams ready to compete this semester. I'd say that we're on the right track. Right. I mean, I had transferred to ISU this uh, previous January, obviously didn't get too much time here uh, with COVID-19. But, you know, upon coming here and just realizing just how big the Illinois State esports program already was in terms of discord size, how many people were active, the teams, the team set up. Um, you know, I was able to immediately find people to even play Rainbow Six with. And I was, you know, I was so happy just to see how mainstream esports has become and how instrumental it is, you know, how it's going to become uh, into college programs, you know, to be able to say, you know, compared to a football player who's like, I'm going D1, I'm getting a scholarship. And you're like, cool, dude, I'm getting a scholarship to play computer games. Like, I think that that's just <laughs> something really cool. Um, and, you know, obviously as time goes on and technology advances, you know, we're going to keep seeing it. I think it's, I think it's awesome though. Um, how it's been set up. So, I mean, it's cool. That, and that's you know, really what it's all about too, right? Is you, you just said it, you came in and you immediately found a community that you connected with that right. had similar passions with you. Right. And you're not the only student, you know, that's been happening. Even when we go back to when I was in college eons ago, we're not going to say what that date is, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think you and I are old, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as somebody who just spent the majority of my undergraduate career inside in my dorm playing video games, not really connecting with others on campus, you know, we want to provide those opportunities for students to connect so that they get out of their dorms, you know, potentially in a common space, but also just seeing what else the university has to offer. So I'm excited to hear that you're one of those students and that you found your community right away as oh, well. Yeah, that's awesome. And we talk about that common space, you know, I've, uh, I've seen one or two pictures now of uh, it's it's the vault right yes and oh my goodness you know i i shared a few of those pictures with friends that are at other universities and i cannot tell you how just how jealous they are that we have such a clean looking facility already for our esports program and i think that a lot of students are gonna take advantage of that space and a lot of memories to be made there for sure yeah, and as someone who's done a good amount of benchmarking on uh, institutions and esports programs around the country, uh, you know, there are some nice facilities for sure. Uh, however, when we're talking aesthetics and functionality of a space, I've got to say we have one of the top aesthetically pleasing uh, esports arenas in the country right now. And the great part is that that isn't going to be our final resting home, or at least our intent is that that's not our final resting home. So uh, hopefully some bigger and even better things are coming in the future with Absolutely. regards to the facility. That'd be right. so cool. 
Yeah, because you're set up right now for for COVID nineteen. You're not your your full capacity that you wanted to be. So I know I know COVID's kind of put a damper on a few things as well too. But um, I kind of wanted to talk to you about how you kind of got involved in gaming and what got you there essentially to you know be playing those games in your dorm room all the time and everything like that. Yeah. So uh, when I was in high school, I was, uh, I was an athlete, you know, I played baseball, basketball and football, your traditional three sport athlete. Uh, But I also played video games with uh, my friends. And that was really my outlet to be able to relieve stress, but as, as a way to stay connected with some of my friends because they went all over the country when they went to college. So you know, I, I'm also what I would term as an introvert as well. So, you know, you may not be able to tell when you're talking to me, but I play it off very well. I do <laughs> like to uh, to be alone and I'm a very solid, solitary person. So gaming just naturally is a great resource and a great outlet for me. So when I'm in my dorm room, you know, I'm playing with friends that I've known my entire life. You know, we're still staying connected. It's like we didn't skip a beat when we were younger. Uh, that really hurt my development in the collegiate landscape because, again, I wasn't making those connections on campus to my peers. So what would happen is as I got older, I, I found myself just gaming more because I didn't have anything else to do because I had no friends. Uh, until I started you know, getting out of my bubble and actually going out and meeting others, I also uh, was a big Harry Potter fan. So I helped to start the Quidditch club at Indiana University, which really helped me start connecting and developing more friendships. Uh, and through that lens, I was able to see like, wow, so it does make sense to get involved in campus and not just stick in your dorm room at all times. But the reality is a lot of students have that same mindset that I do, right? Like, oh, why yeah. do I need to go out or do anything when I can access everything from here? I think COVID-19 has done a really great job of showing us that mentality that gamers have suffered for forever and that like, yeah, we can do everything online for sure, but we still really crave that human interaction and that, that human connection. So uh, right. for me, you know, b- getting into gaming uh, I, I mentioned it earlier, but League of Legends was the first computer game that I actually played. And it was because, again, all my friends from home were playing it and got me connected with it. Uh, but League of Legends actually allowed me to break out of my, my shell because I ended up finding some other folks on campus who played the game as well and started making those connections. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's where it came from was was League of Legends and me just being a loner, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> No, and I could completely understand that too. Cause like, I'm not, I'm not a total, total extrovert introvert. I'm like, like literally on the line that sometimes I cross over on either side. It's a hybrid. You know? Yeah. I'm a hybrid. It depends <laughs> on the day, you know, like on a day I might be a little more introverted. I might be a little more extroverted, but I also started on League of Legends. Um, I actually was one of the first few people that started our ISU club um, for League of Legends uh, back in what that was 2010. Oh my yes. goodness. So uh, 2009, of course, got the game. I was in beta. I loved it and everything. Um, unfortunately, that account got banned because I, as <laughs> unfortunately as the community is, we can be a little toxic <laughs> sometimes. And oh, yeah. unfortunately, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. back then I was, um, I guess you could say um, ninja, essentially, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if we want to name drop. Um, where I was, you know, younger, I was a little worse. And then, you know, as I grew up, I got, you know, more tolerant and you know understand a lot more things as i played the game and enjoyed the game more so that's kind of how i met some of my friends i know i always have like people over you know from the the league of legends uh group as well as um, we had other people from other different communities that you know we kind of just found like as like gamers just in general on campus you know we try to have people over try to acclimate people just because you know it's 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 college you know you, you gotta start meeting people what's the easiest way to do it well yeah and you could be people on your floor or different things but the better way was kind of just like okay let's do it through gaming so you know we we did that like half i think half of my floor started league that first or second like week of like school that when we came in just because it was just like what's this that, that's oh. a bad habit to get into second yep. week into school <laughs> <laughs> that's a very bad habit yeah yeah so like i i had the beta beforehand of course but i was just like oh so that's interesting to me that you know you guys were starting that league of legends connection with you know isu in what 2010 you said mm-hmm. oh my god i was 10 years old 
<laughs> like, <laughs> that, you know, it's crazy to me. Yeah, um, I dated myself a little bit there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, wow. Like, I didn't even, you know, I, I it's, you know, it shows how, how like, it's been a long time coming for, you know, gaming to be integrated into the college scene, you know, with collegiate esports. But the progress that's been made since then has been crazy. But, uh, Kirk, would you say that League is your your favorite game or what's your favorite game of all time? Cause I, you know, I gotta know. Well, uh, be prepared for a massive amount of thumbs downs and down votes on <laughs> YouTube when you oh, post no. this, oh, but no. I am, <laughs> I am primarily a Fortnite player right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Kirk. Kirk. Yep. <laughs> hey, I, 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 you know, do, I I'm play League hate. of Legends still. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was going to say like, I, I can't hate on that because I play BRs too. Like I, the first BR I think I started on was uh, not even DayZ or, or Rust. It was uh, H1Z1. H1, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, that, and, and that's how I met like all those streamers like Ninja again and uh, Summit and uh, Shroud and all of them because it's either, you know, I, I killed them or you got killed by them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's simple as that, you know. And, it was, and going going but, back to the reason why I play Fortnite because I think that's important to understand as well uh, <laughs> is really because that is what my girlfriend as well as my childhood friends play. Okay. Currently. Yeah. So, yeah. That makes a so, lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm playing it to stay connected with them right now. Sure. And that to be fair, I enjoy the game because I put a lot of time in it as well. Yeah, right. And I, I played it since, you know, it got popular. I was one of those people who, who hopped on the bandwagon after Ninja blew it up. Same, uh, right. But I've put an immense amount of time into it since then. I have uh, admittedly a gross amount of skins as well. So I'm not yeah. happy to tell how much money I've spent on it, but I'm probably <laughs> yeah. half the reason why Epic is a multi-billion dollar industry now. <laughs> You're the reason they bought Rocket League. That's yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I can, you know, I see where you're coming from. I, I remember back in 2017, you know, some of my buddies told me like the game was releasing that day. I picked it up on Xbox and, you know, I, I don't even remember half of 2017 into 2019 because I think I put, you know, a thousand hours into Fortnite and you're right, you know, funding basically the Epic store at that point <laughs> <laughs> with skins and all that stuff. Obviously I, you know, the game went into a direction that I just couldn't keep up with, with in terms of metas changing, but you know, I, I'll still give it to you. It's, you know, it's fun to occasionally go back to, but the comp scene for that is crazy. Some of yeah. the, like the most mechanically skilled people I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. You've definitely got to be invested to can still continue to like, or to, you're just too invested that you're unwilling to give it up. I think that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. I should talk about skids. Cause, cause I, I'm sure I've paid over at least a grand in the league. <laughs> Since oh, don't that, don't yeah, even I, get me started on league. So yeah, I like league, those, I think I have too many. <laughs> I've got one of those uh, season one accounts as well. Mine's not banned. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> Uh, uh, this but, one also uh, was from that too. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I've I've got uh, I've got a good amount of skins. I've got I really like some of the uh, the older skins. So whenever I play, which is very rarely these days, but I like to to one trick Mundo as a support, and I'll use the <laughs> Mundo verse skin, uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> People don't like that, by the way. Oh, I I, I do recall. I think you did that in our uh, summer GG leagues intramural when you had to summon. Hey, and I I dominated, didn't I? People don't know how to play against it. That's what it is. Knew exactly what he was doing there. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's it's very simple. Just just take the ADC that literally shreds tanks, and you probably (laughs) would win. You know, but. not everyone plays that character, so you know I, I don't expect everyone to play Vayne. So, um, but yeah, I, I definitely have way too many skins. I I I, I was a very big um, Pantheon player when he came out, as well as Shen. Still play both of them now, but uh, I think I play Shen more because I'm a top laner in the meta, especially with everything like that right now. But yeah, definitely back to Fortnite. Yeah, I I I have. Dump some money into that. I've yeah. dumped some money <laughs> into Warzone right now. I've dumped some money into H1, definitely, as well as, oh, what's the other BR? Oh, Apex. Yeah, I've dumped money into Ooh, Apex. that one was good. I, I had to uninstall for space, but I do like that. <laughs> you know what? I, I had to uninstall that because uh, because of Warzone or because of Modern Warfare because they keep dropping like 400 gigabytes. 
yet, you know. I mean, I, I, I literally, I'm not going to lie, I just saw a TikTok today where it was showing, uh, was it Fortnite, uh, Apex, as well as, oh, I, I forget what the other game was. And then it showed Call of Duty, you know, at the, the 400 gigs. And then you, you just see a figure coming out of the, the shadows. And you're yeah. trying to figure out who is it. And you just see all, all of the games are running through are dead because they're going to be removed for Absolutely. Call of Duty Cold War. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, because Call of Duty Cold War is going to have that gig, that 100 gig. 100 gigs, not 100, yeah. No, 1,000 gig. Wow. Oh, my God. Was it 1,000 gigs? Probably. Is that, is that verified? Uh, not verified. It's 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 more meme worthy than anything. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. I had to go pick up some like a terabyte of storage. Seriously, like, I just built a PC this year where I have two terabytes in here. So yeah, it, I <laughs> you know the the one's okay right now because it, it's got everything on there, especially Warzone and all my other shooters, and then everything else is you know on the other one right now. So so David, moving on, we wanted to talk to you about like you know obviously we know you're a big fan of video games you know and, you know that's obviously part of what shaped you but we wanted to know what like what else you like to do outside of work like what your favorite hobbies are so i am a big diy type person okay uh not that i'm good at any diy <laughs> stuff but i really i really enjoy uh looking up how to do things uh and then via yeah, watching youtube videos primarily and then trying my hand at it so uh, some of the things that I've done in the past, uh, I've actually uh, fixed my own uh, head gasket that's blown on my car before, uh, 100% by watching YouTube videos, uh, which saved me like $3,000 at the time. Uh, I can also say that I failed miserably doing that because about a month later, it rebroke because I didn't do something oh, no. right. So, uh, <laughs> but you know what? I got a month out of it and it took me, I think, two months to be able to <laughs> to get it to that way. Um, I also really enjoy like woodworking and doing things with my hands. Um, but my main passions outside of esports is another tech related thing. I actually run a small YouTube channel uh, over hardware and, and technology. Oh, that nice. I, I do a deep dive into benchmarking into different platforms and, you know, the benefits of you know, different variations of your CPUs, your GPU. So I like to stay up to date on all that stuff when, when it's happening uh, and try to get most of that hardware. I am fortunate enough that some of that stuff gets sent to me for review. Oh, wow. Uh, but nice. Whenever it doesn't, I, I purchase it so that I can continue to, to provide that content, not just for those who are watching it, which again are very few <laughs> in the grand scheme of YouTube where there's billions and billions of, of viewers um, but for my own personal interests as well, because, you know, a lot of, a lot of that hardware, uh, affects some of the decision-making and, and some of the things that I do as a program director, ensuring that our students have, you know, the best of the best equipment to be able to compete at the highest level. So, uh, whenever I'm not here, I'm either at home doing uh, home improvement projects, YouTube, playing with my brand new puppy, uh, or just reading about new tech stuff. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to shout out that channel because that's awesome. Uh, I allow people to find me organically. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I can yeah, tell you I've, I've shown up in the recommended feeds of uh, a certain 10 million plus subscriber YouTube that goes by the name of Linus. Nice. Ah. Kirk, that's awesome. Uh, you know, I definitely didn't think like, when you first said tech reviews, like they would be to that extent, but that's so cool. You get to do that kind of stuff. You obviously have some opinions on the new series of graphics cards. I would imagine. I do. I, I am actually getting the 3090 sent to me on launch day. Oh, wow. uh, and it is the first high end card that I get to keep. And I don't have to send back after review. So I'm super nice. excited about that. Hey. Nice. Might be uh, looking at a giveaway for the Discord community here Ooh. with that bad boy. Okay. A little, okay. little precursor. A little precursor, yeah, that's awesome. Is, is there a specific um, part of that, that tech review that you like doing? Like, is, there, is, like, is it like headsets? Is it the mics? Is it doing PC parts? Like, what, what do you like reviewing the most? Honestly, I like doing benchmarks on productivity suites as well as games. So um, the main reason for that is just because there's a huge variety of games and 
things don't run consistently across every game because of different APIs or the different engines that games are built in. So AMD, for example, is optimized for a certain number of game titles, right? Whereas Intel is optimized for another certain number of game titles. So trying to figure out that not really apples to apples comparison is what really drives me to continue to do it. And it also helps keep me informed, right? So that I know that, you know, hey, if we want to be at the highest level, we need the 3080 uh, that's coming out because it's going to be able to run at the 360 hertz that uh, NVIDIA is just launching. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for those. I just picked up a 2070 Super this year with uh, this PC build. I, w- I went a little cheaper. I know I do a 2080, but I would have done 2080 Super, but I did not have as much money. You know, COVID relief uh, credit only gave you so much, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that, uh, that honestly wasn't a terrible choice because your 3070 now is going to perform better than a 2080 Ti. So at, I think it's $500 is what the MSRP for launch is going to be. Oh, geez. Wow. That's, yeah. that's so, definitely... So people who bought 2080 Supers and 2080 Ti's are kicking themselves in the rear now. Yeah, that's that's definitely. I think that's why I go with the seventies now because of the fact that eighties somehow just get beaten out by the seventies that next year or two years um, down the line, essentially from the new launches. So, traditionally, the the seventy series has always been the best value for for the cards ever since the the uh, nine seventy came out eons ago. That's good to know for uh, <laughs> next PC purchase. Exactly. Sorry to nerd out on the uh, the bird herd today. Oh no, you're perfectly fine. We're all nerds here. We should I mean, we should be nerding yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> kind of that's how it works. Um, but Kirk, you know, if you, you know, obviously you have this channel, do you think that like, given the opportunity, if you could, would you go full time on that? Uh, I don't think so. Just because, again, bringing it full circle, the entire reason that I got into student affairs was to support students and to bring them value and to to connect them with what it is they love doing. Again, I, I always go back to, you know, myself being in my dorm room alone and all the misconnections that I had. Uh, and I saw what we were able to do at Akron, where we had those 2000 students Um, You know, in the population in Akron, it's a commuter school and it was roughly 17,000. So a pretty big chunk of the student population were participating in our programs and just hearing the anecdotal stories of the connections that the students were making together, seeing the friendships building uh, for people just being in space, you know, not even being competitive. They just show up on a, a random Thursday evening to play osu or some other like game that they could just launch in their own dorm rooms that don't require heavy graphics powers so you know my whole my whole point and my whole reason for being in this industry is to be able to provide outlets to students so that they don't end up you know missing out on their college experiences as well as the opportunities that their their universities and the people at the university provide so even if i got big i would probably just use that clout to be able to develop some more resources for the students here and potentially get some of the the bigger companies interested in wanting to support what we're doing here obviously we talk about the social aspect of you know the esports program here and how it's not just competitive play and how it's, you know, making new friends, new connections through games. Um, I remember, you know, just immediately Ducky on the Siege team asking people like who wanted to play Siege, you know, didn't matter what rank we were, anything like that, just had a really good time with it. And I, you know, I think that that's something really cool. Uh, It's something that a lot of people in high school should be looking forward to as they look at schools and as they start, you know, you know, making that those hard choices to at least know that they have a community that they can fall back on, get involved in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely how league was for me too. So like that's, that's how I kind of made my different friend groups with that on top of, well, you know, I was, I, I did other activities, you know, of course on campus and, made sure that, you know, between, you know, meeting people in class and stuff like that. But definitely it was, I think gaming definitely helped the most to kind of cope with things, especially when 
everything's just so stressful, you know, with college and going on and different things that it was definitely nice. Like I still play with some of those college friends still to this day. Some of them have actually joined our discord. So um, if any of them eventually see this, which I will send it to them, uh, we'll make sure they join our discord. But anyways, um, can I ask you all a question? Oh, sure. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Reverse card. Uh, so can you tell me what you're most looking forward to uh, from the esports program or even what your, uh, your favorite part about it so far is? You can go first, Max. My favorite part of the esports program since I've been here are the new friends that I've made, especially just playing. You know, I'm not even on Varsity Siege. You know, I'm not that good at Rainbow Six. Um, but just being on the JV team and making new friends, um, having that teamwork. And, you know, we actually get to play in the Collegiate League for R6 this semester, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I just, you know, I think it's a, it's a lot of fun. And then, obviously, I get to take a look at the different parts of the Discord server and see the, how successful people are at finding friends and finding groups. And we've got so many different, you know, channels and stuff it's just i i think it's cool i brag to all my friends about the esports program here um i've got some people in high school that i'm just like trying to persuade and you know they're all really interested in esports and i'm just you know i think it's something unique that we're doing and we're really i would like to think leading the state of illinois in terms of how we're going about this program and i'm proud of that yeah i definitely want to agree and kind of segue off of that too basically that um I've met more people I think here than I did when I originally, you know, was in my club and everything like that for League of legends that, you know, the nice thing is as an alumni, I can still contribute to do different things. Like for example, be a moderator for the discord or um, help out with this, especially, or when it comes to uh, coaching one of the club teams, you know, for League of legends, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I can at least feel like, even though I can't, you know, send money towards the ICU or anything like that, this is kind of my way to kind of help contribute back to the community that got me to where I'm at now with my career and different things. You know, I, I figured this is my way to pay forward essentially and, you know, help out with that. But yeah, I've definitely met more people, which is nice. And, you know, it'd be nice to see all of you guys when um, COVID's not happening anymore. Yeah, we were talking about like all that stuff and how we wanted to get together as a team, but you know, it's obviously very difficult during COVID era. Yeah, especially since uh, if they're like me, who's at home and not down at school, uh, <laughs> you know, not everyone wants to make the hour and a half hike or two right, hours or right. whatever the distance is essentially for people. So I totally get that. Um, so, but yeah, uh -huh. definitely. I, I intended to come Labor Day weekend, but you know your your case is spiked, so <laughs> that was a no for me. <laughs> I'm actually, actually, yeah, I'm part of that statistic right now. <laughs> oh no! So it's been it's not been fun, but it you know it is what it is, and there's I knew I took every precaution and didn't go out partying, so yeah. Well, it is great to hear that you both have two different perspectives, uh, one from an alumni, one from, you know, a newer student, and we're able to serve both of those, which is really the whole intent of the program. You know, obviously we want to engage our students here and we want to provide them opportunities to get connected and to meet others, but we also want it to go beyond just their time here and for them to stay engaged and to be a part of, you know, the, the legacy and the culture that we're building with our program because you guys are all part of it. So, um, appreciate the, the insight. You know, I, I know normally people probably don't ask you questions, but I, I genuinely am curious in terms of the experience folks are having, specifically because we, we have this big disruption. You know, as soon as I was hired, I was here about a month and a half, and then everything went online because of COVID. So it's great to hear that at least we're, we're fulfilling the mission that we set out for in some capacity. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel like it's definitely getting there. And unfortunately, COVID is putting a hinder on things. But I feel like, you know, it's it's strengthening these bonds with all these people just because, especially for Max, I mean, he's meeting more people at, on campus that he can go and meet, go 
grab lunch or go see a movie or different things, you know, or, you know, ha- have like a little small get together. I don't know how, what your uh, uh, ten or less. is down ten or there. Less. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't, I'm like, I don't know if it's 10 or less. I don't know yeah. if it's five or less. I don't know. Remember. So um, that's why I wanted to say like, yeah, it's, it's nice where you can do that at least for uh, you can see your siege team or, you know, I could go down and see any of the, the, the league people and different things. It's definitely one of those nice things that um, the community is definitely bringing together a little bit. I think more so that um, maybe another club would do, you know, on campus, you know, if they were dedicated towards like quit the, the Quidditch team, like you talked about earlier, or um, a uh, sport, you know, of some other kind or, you know, a debate team or anything like that. But I think, I think definitely this is on the right track and I, do appreciate it and i do applaud you for all the work that you've done David. hey it, it's not just me uh i gotta give a huge shout out to jack blonick uh, i'm sure you guys know him but uh previous club president is now our new graduate assistant for esports uh he's really been putting the hours in to help the club scene grow so you know really the whole discord and the whole club scene is his baby you know i'm i'm a figurehead but he's the one behind the scenes doing all the work uh, as well as all the student leaders. So we can't have these clubs without students stepping up, wanting to lead them. So, you know, I'm not going to take any other credit aside from, you know, bringing the idea. It's really on Jack and the rest of the students and the leadership for making it come to fruition. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely something that I, I feel like it's definitely being executed. And I'm glad that uh, Jack is still able to contribute, you know, even not being the president anymore. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I think that's about it for me. Yeah, I think oh. so too. Oh, I do want to ask one quick question. It'll be Uh-oh. very short. Final question. Uh, final question and then we're done. Uh, so for how is that process of recruiting all these people for the, the varsity teams, the, the varsity Redbird esports teams, not the club teams? Uh, so there's really <laughs> no <specific laughs> stuff there, right? Uh, we rely obviously on just the word getting out about the program from high school students around the country uh, mm-hmm. who may be interested, which is not a great way to uh, recruit, honestly. But another thing that we found that was pretty successful is all of these games have their inherent leaderboards, right? So we know who the best of the best players are. So just taking the time to individually reach out to every single one of those players, which can be time consuming Mm -hmm. uh, and just getting interest or let seeing if they're interested in a collegiate experience. The great thing is a lot of them are of college age and have either skipped uh, going to college or haven't even thought about going to college because Mm -hmm. they had uh, professional or amateur aspirations. So a lot of the folks that we were able to land were some of those uh, some of those people that we reached out to. But again, just just hearing that esports is coming and that the university is willing to officially support it brought in other students and and high schoolers from around the state of Illinois who weren't necessarily considering Illinois State, who we then became their number one choice. So it's kind of a mixture, you know. If I had the secret formula. Uh, I don't think I'd tell you on here just because yeah, of I don't course. Know you, but, <laughs> right. but but those are some of the strategies that we use that, you know, wound up being successful or I guess this coming season we'll see if they were successful. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to see how all these players work out and how they uh, can excel and promote our uh, college as well as our esports team. Ditto. Yeah. Well, that was you, uh, gentlemen. Yeah, good first episode. Uh, back to the bird herd. It was really nice talking to you, Kirk. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun talking to you. It was. It was nice to actually talk to you instead of just type to you in Discord. <laughs> right. It's completely different, right? Did I sound how you thought I sounded? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can definitely say no. Um, but but I I would definitely not think you're introverted. I'll say that. I will, I will definitely say that based on your voice. I don't think you're introverted. I've learned uh, to wear many hats over my time uh, in collegiate esports, but also just collegiate. Oh, so you're me. You're the jack of all trades. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely a, a good first episode and everything. I want to thank uh, Max for joining me today, as well as David Kirk for taking the time out of his busy schedule 
to talk to us and everyone else that's uh, a part of Rapid Esports. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I really love what you guys are doing as well. You know, getting the word out about what we're doing in the program as well as the university and hopefully what some of our clubs are going to be doing. So appreciate getting to kick off this uh, this new season of the Bird Herd, and I'm excited to, to watch you all grow and develop this. Can't wait. Can't wait. All righty. Take it easy, all. You take it easy, too, you man. You, too.